I get high speed internet, email, games, and a camera so I can take photos and videos of loved ones and share them. But what's really exciting is this. During Welcome to Acting for Film and TV, brought to you by Lee W. TV. I'm your host, Ed Schultz. Today, we're dealing with part two of Tools of the Trade, show tools. But first, again, a reminder that if you're an actor, whether it's in TV, film, or even on stage, you are a part of show business. There's no business like show business like no business I know. There are two aspects to what you're doing. One is performing arts and the other is the business aspect of it because you are either a hobby actor, a semi-professional actor, or a working actor. In any of those cases, you need to remind, remember that this is a business. Now, today, as I said, we're going to be talking about part two of the tools of the trade. These are business tools that you'll need to have. And they are, very briefly, a headshot, a resume, and a demo reel. We'll begin with a headshot. A headshot is First, first of all, you need to know that the best way to sell yourself as an actor is to have a professional headshot. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Anyway, a headshot is basically a photograph of you, head and shoulders. For example, here's one of my early headshots. Now, there are several things that are important about this. One is that head and shoulders is really what they're looking for. Because when a casting director looks at a picture like this, they want to see your face. They want to be immediately attracted to your face. You know, your face may portray a particular kind of character. There may be particular roles that you like to play. And so you'll gear your headshot toward that kind of look for yourself. Now, one of the most important things is that you get a professional headshot. What's a professional headshot? Hold it. I think you're going to like this picture. So what's a professional headshot? Well, here are two pictures. This is a professional headshot. This is not. This is a high school yearbook picture. What's one of the major differences that you see between these two? First of all, in this headshot, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at the camera. This picture, for some reason or another, <clears throat> when posing, they would tell you to look off to the side. Don't look at the camera. If you have a headshot like this in which you're looking at the camera, you're engaging with the person who is looking at the headshot. And that's important. The casting director wants to see you. Now, another thing that's very important about headshots is, and we'll go into this in more depth in another episode, but at the, in the beginning at least, the headshot, number one, needs to look like you. If, for example, you're a man and you have a beard in your headshot, when you show up for your audition, you'd better have a beard. Don't shave it off because you think, oh, for this role, maybe I should be clean shaven. If you sent them a picture of you with a full beard, that's the way you need to look when you show up. Because maybe that's the look that they're looking for. That's one of the things that's important about showing your headshot. The casting director is looking for a particular type, a particular look. And if your headshot looks like the look, that they're looking for, chances are you'll get a chance at the audition. But if you show up looking very different from your headshot, that's not what they were calling for in the first place. The next thing that you need, the next tool that you need is a resume. 
And when I say a resume, I'm not talking about the typical business resume where you have, these are my goals and objectives, or this is my mission statement. And then a list of all the places that you've worked and all the schools that you've gone to. An actor's resume is very different from that. So don't ever send a casting director your business resume. They don't care that you worked in Walmart and you worked in this bank and you worked in that school. Those things are not important to a casting director. What is important is the acting that you've done and the training that you've had for acting. What you need to do, and we'll show you a close-up of this in a moment, what you need to do is to have a three-column resume. The first column will have the name of the production, the name of the movie, a Christmas carol. The second column will have the role that you played, Ebenezer Scrooge. The third column will have either the name of the director or of the production company, Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, Steven Spielberg, those are the three major columns. If you don't have those three columns, the casting director, as soon as they look at your resume, it's gone. Another part of your resume that's very important is your training. You need to list whatever kind of training that you've had, acting classes that you've taken, uh, if you have a private coach, an acting coach, put that in there. Any kind of education that you've had. And again, we'll have a full episode on training, education, agents, managers, all of that sort of stuff. But for now, just keep in mind that any training that you've had should be listed on your resume. The third element of your resume is special skills. And this could be extremely important. If you have any kind of special skills, if you're a juggler, if you know how to dance, if you can play any kind of sports really well, you do skateboarding, you play tennis, you play volleyball, you, you're a sports fencer, you shoot guns, any of the, you do karate. Any of those things can be very crucial to your getting a particular role. Sometimes when casting notices come out, they say, we need people who can do this. And if you have that on your resume, and by the way, be honest. If you're a beginner, mention that on your resume. Sport fencing, beginner. So they know that you're not going to play Zorro and have all kinds of fancy sword fights right away. But you know something about it. The third tool that you'll need is a demo reel. Now a demo reel is a short video, maybe two or three minutes long that has clips from various projects or films or commercials that you've been in. Of course, when you're beginning, you don't have anything to show. But don't worry about that. There are many castings that you'll go to where you don't need a demo reel. But as you get more advanced, as you get more experienced, you'll need a demo reel. How do you get stuff to put on the demo reel? Okay. One of the best ways that you can begin to get experience is by being in student films. Go to your local college or even go to their website and see if they have a film or theater program. Chances are, if they do, they have students who are trying to make films. They have castings all the time. You don't get paid usually for things like that, but it's very good experience. Get yourself in a few student films. Ask the, the student for clips from that film for your demo reel, and that at least will give you something in the beginning. But again, with any of these tools, 
Don't be too quick to get something just like that. You know, don't have your headshot taken by Fred, the guy next door, who's a hobby photographer. Go to a professional headshot photographer. Where do you find someone like that? Okay, that's a good question. The best way to find someone like that is to go online, go to Facebook, for example, look for acting groups in your area. Actors, Tampa, Florida, or wherever you may happen to be. Get into any groups, actors groups that you can find on there and put a post up and say, hey, I'm new to this business. I'd like to get some professional headshots. Whom do you recommend? and they'll let you know who the best people are. Don't go to Sears or JCPenney if they're still around and go to the photographer there. They don't know how to take professional headshots for actors. Don't go to the mall and go to this photographer who usually does weddings and cute pictures of kids, portraits, that sort of thing. A portrait is not a headshot. And a major rule of thumb for all of these photographs is plain background. No hat, no sunglasses, no logos, because the casting director wants to see you. They don't want to be distracted by all kinds of buildings and trees and flowers and things like that in the background. They want to see you, your face, your look. That's what's most important. In photographs. Now that's all we have for today. In the next episode we're going to take a look at some of the differences between acting in the theater and for film. So in the meantime please like share and subscribe. If you have questions for me, feel free to put something in the, in the comments column below, or if you happen to see this on Facebook, in the comments, or you can even contact me directly at my email, actingforfilmandtv at gmail.com. Bye for now. We'll see you again. Take seven. Now get out of here.